I'm Tom Ray, and this is American Bandito. Last week, I got the chance to meet Holly Myers, who's an artist here in town. And during the interview, she talked about how her stuff was on display currently at Stone Fence, which is a store on Atwood Avenue. After I got done talking to her, my wife and I stopped by the store to check it out. It gave us a chance to see her work in person and actually to check out Stone Fence because it had recently moved and relocated on Atwood Avenue. There's lots of stuff inside, lots of things to check out and a bunch of different work by other artists of all kinds. So here's something I never claimed to be. I've never claimed to be a photographer. I do take pictures, everybody does. You have a phone with you at all times and taking a picture is just something we can all do now. I mean, seriously, some of us don't even realize how, not even difficult, but just not as convenient to take photos. And when you did, you had a limited amount and then digital cameras came about. Well, you had to carry that camera with you. Now we just have our phones. I don't even think I use my phone as a phone as much as I use it for other things. What I was trying to say is I'm not a photographer, but that's not to say using your phone as a camera to express yourself isn't a form of artwork. As a matter of fact, a lot of people start out that way. A lot of people, it's just a gateway and they want to learn how to do more, and then they do. So I was really happy when someone contacted me to be on the show who was a photographer, and that person that I met is Melanie Jones. Where are you originally from? Are you from Madison or you're from somewhere else, I believe? No, I'm originally from Virginia, but I haven't lived there in a long time. So I spent seven years in California okay, and then spent two years in Montana and then moved to Madison from Montana last year. Why did you end up moving to Madison? What, what made you choose our little town? My partner's job. Oh, okay. <laughs> so kind of came kicking and screaming a little bit, but I've learned <laughs> to love the area since... But yeah, it was, we moved from Montana because there's no jobs out there, basically. Oh. And yeah. Well, you were doing photography out there. There were no jobs for you or just no jobs in general? In general. It didn't feel like there was anything where we could really build a life. You can both work for $10 an hour and there's just more economic opportunity, I think, for both of us in Madison. So that was the original push to move there. And then we've since kind of fallen in love with the area kind of after we moved. <laughs> yeah. And scenically, it's very different than Montana. Now, I've only driven oh, through Montana so once, yeah. but it's like, yeah. It, first of all, everything looks like it's on a hill. And it's just, yeah, like one minute it's desert, one minute it's not. Just, oh, it's it's really pretty out there. I like it. Yeah, it's definitely, I mean, the West is so different. You know, we're only just over the Mississippi here, but it's just such a different space. So that's been a really interesting shift. Being a photographer is just like, having to kind of shift my perception of the landscape a little bit to make my pictures. Because in Montana, those big vistas, that big open sky was such a big part of what I would photograph. So having to kind of switch how I see the landscape around me has been a, a big part of kind of getting used to working in Madison. Could you describe some of the shift of the landscape? Like, how does it affect what you're doing? It, in Montana, it's just so big and so dramatic and so... It's kind of really hard to take a bad picture of Montana, unless like <laughs> just over underexposed, you know, and there, there were a couple of places that I would take clients specifically that had just like really big vistas because oh, we right. lived in like a little mountain town in between three mountain ranges. The amount of it was almost just too easy <laughs> to just like walk outside and then be able to create a beautiful vista and there was a bunch of neon signs. It's just a very photogenic little town. And not that Madison isn't, but it, it definitely gave me a, an appreciation of like wild open spaces. Uh -huh. Coming to Madison, you know, so many photographers focused on downtown, but yeah. I really enjoy driving out of town, taking pictures that are more open, you know, more the rolling hills, like going south into like Brooklyn or Oregon, like over yeah. there and just like really really getting those big open skies, even though it's just rolling hills and not the big mountains, but it's still that open prairie is still really pretty. That's a good point. Like you're taking the knowledge you have and applying it to the other areas that really people don't try to access a lot. I like that idea. Yeah. There's a lot of photographers who like, it, especially in the wedding business, who do a lot of farm and barn stuff. I just really love that wide open space. And that's really what I'm kind of trying to, to work on. And that's kind of been my niche since I've been here is just 
continuing to work with that open space and trying to find that wild topography. How did you get started as a photographer? How did it all begin? I was in grad school to actually, I was studying literature. I really just wanted to be a professor and live the rest of my life in a library. And then I realized that I really hated grad school. I really hated it. I decided to travel because I graduated from with my master's degree on the day that Lehman Brothers fell. So there was no jobs. Everything fell apart. I had squirreled away a bunch of money and I traveled to India for five months. Wow. I don't know. I bought a little cheap point and shoe. I only had like a, a hundred bucks. So I bought the biggest point and shoot I could afford at that time and went to India. And I just really fell in love with photography being a way to approach a space. You know, I always thought I was going to be a writer. I don't know. I just, I fell in love with the visual aspect of things when I was in India because it's so overwhelming and it's so loud. And it just, if you take away the visual, when you go to a place like India, you take away so, so much. So yeah. that's how I got started. And then I got really excited about the pictures that I got out there, but I didn't know anything about photography. I worked a bunch and saved up and bought a really big camera and then didn't know how to use it really. So I just like, (laughs) it was just like fake it till you make it for a long time. And then I finally decided that I was going to kind of put up or shut up. So I actually went back to school and did master's work in photography in San Francisco. I didn't finish my master's in that because student loans kind of caught up, but I did do a year and a half at the graduate level at a commercial photography school. Wow. I like the fact that it was really just this one little camera and a, and a trip basically made you change your entire mind. Exactly. That's, that's awesome. So you had no background in photography before that. Like, had you ever developed your own film or anything? Nope. None of it. Disposable cameras on school trips, but that's it. When you did that, how did you find the eye that you have now during that time? Like what made you go, Oh, this is how it's done. Was there a moment where it, it just suddenly clicked? I guess when I started working, kind of looking at the pictures that I had taken from India the first time, I don't know, I realized that there was like something special in those pictures. And I showed them to other people because I wasn't sure if it was just special to me. There was something that other people could see too. And I started getting a really good reception from them. I actually printed them off and started putting them in coffee shops around town. And Really? Yeah. Really? You asked if you could put them in there, right? You didn't just go in and start like guerrilla oh, yeah, marketing yeah, yeah. yourself? No, that came later. No, I'm just kidding. But um, <laughs> yeah, I definitely asked if I could do it. You know, I'm sure this happens to everybody, but you kind of start out thinking you're going to do one thing and then you um, you just kind of go down this different path and it really takes you somewhere that you feel like you can actually do, you know? Yeah. Like I said, when I was in grad school, I just was not really having a good time. I didn't really like it. Um, I didn't really like some of the professors that I was with. So I just, you know, it wasn't like, it was really disappointing. And Mm -hmm. I think that photography kind of came when I needed it, you know, kind of gave me direction when I was really in a point in my life where I was a little bit directionless. So yeah, it's been an interesting journey. And now I guess I'm circling back to writing a little bit and, and kind of starting to be more consistent with writing a blog just kind of discussing like really personal things that go into my work a little bit and kind of trying to give my work more context. I was looking at some of your blog and I wanted to ask about that. And also the beauty of it is, is everybody who writes a blog, they wish they had pictures that they could put into the post. So you've got that covered. <laughs> right. Yeah. It's kind of funny being like kind of a traditional com- like commercial photographer, portraits, weddings, et cetera. But like blogging in a way that is different than most people in my industry do. Yeah. You know, most most photography blogs from people that kind of work in the same spheres that I do are just like, hey, check out this beautiful session that I just did. And here's a bunch of pictures. And it's really just a short little blurb about the couple and that or whatever. And mm-hmm. then it's a bunch of pictures. And I just I don't know. I feel like my work is so personal or at least to me, it's it's just so personal that I I just wanted to give a little bit of context and I just wanted to kind of talk about things that felt more genuine to me. I'm not really like a super bubbly, oh my gosh, kind of person. So (laughs) kind of, I don't know, writing about things that are really important to me and then trying to kind of show pictures that have a conversation and a dialogue with that Mm -hmm. is, is kind of 
what I'm trying to do with my blog. Uh, and I got that from it. I was looking at your blog earlier and yeah, it was an actual blog. It was you talking about things that's happening to you. And then also yeah. talking about work that you've done, hearing that you have a history as a writer, that makes a lot of sense. And I, I yeah. think that's great that you're able to, now you're expressing from both sides. That's really cool. Well, thank you. I'm, I'm glad it translates. <laughs> it does. It does. It really does. Okay, good. How did you start promoting yourself? You said you started putting up your work in coffee shops. How did you first start putting things out there? And when did you decide to do that? I did it when I had those pictures. And then I kind of thought I was hot shit for a long time when I had those pictures and was like really promoting myself at that time. And then kind of realized like, oh, I don't, I don't actually really know what I'm doing. So I went back and just kind of put my nose to the grindstone a little bit. And then was just like going to school and learning and trying to to really learn and practice and shooting all the time. After I went to school, I moved to Montana. Montana is when I really felt confident. I guess Montana is where I really started to kind of treat myself like a business person. Okay. And really say like, okay, I'm going to do this as my livelihood or at least try and build towards that. So I guess I've been doing it professionally like treating myself like this is what I'm going to do with my life for about three years. Are and, we at that three uh, years or are you past the three years now? I am. I'm coming up on it and okay. it's, it's actually, it's finally starting to actually happen. I think that the connections that I have with the people that I photograph has been really genuine mm -hmm. um, and really, um, really personal to me. So, and that's kind of the business model that I'm looking for. So you know, I'd rather have my climb to fame be be slow and steady and have clients and work that is reflective of me than have, you know, as many clients as possible and making as much money as possible, but have the connections not be that really solid, personal, you know, deep connection that I, I really strive for and really try and get with my clients. That makes sense. I like the philosophy of it. And I'm assuming for photographers that wedding business is definitely a source of income for photography because all weddings are yeah. for it. but you're saying you'd like to do one that you can look back on and say like this also expresses my style yeah so i think and, I, and i'm getting there for sure i've done some weddings and i've got some on the books for this fall i have one that i'm really excited i mean i'm excited for all three of them the one that i'm really excited about is somebody found me online because of a shared love of like Yellowstone National Park. Oh, cool. <laughs> so she was kind of funny because she was talking about how she was looking for wedding photographers and she felt like a lot of them were like not fi fitting her personally and not fitting her personality and she was about to give up. And then she found, you know, somebody that she felt like she could connect with. And she and I have really had a lot of conversations where we've connected. I think that that's coming, but it's, you know, it's just, it just takes, it feels like it takes longer to find those people, but that's fine. And I like that you're you're looking for that and you're looking for something yeah. that satisfies you in that sense. How did you find the subject matter for a lot of your personal work? I know on your website, you have a lot of it separated by categories. And what made you kind of go into those categories? You know, my website is a constant. I'm constantly tweaking it. So the the, the new kind of categories are, are a little bit new on my website. Okay. But about six months ago, I've always been interested in, in really photographing women. Like that's just been a thing that I've been very passionate kind of from day one and really, really looking to have conversations with women about empowerment and beauty and I'm just kind of looking for, for a, a little, to go a little bit deeper. Mm -hmm. Once I kind of felt like I had a cohesive portfolio that I could show that off is when I made that, that women tab, that women portfolio yeah, that work is really important to me because, you know, I, I do travel a lot still. You know, I, I live in Madison. I do a lot of work in Madison, but I still like my heart is kind of in the West still. So I, I do go out there. I do go to Nevada in August. I, I work oh. for a festival in August, and that's where a lot of those big open desert pictures are from. And then I go to Montana because I still have clients out there. So I still I, I, I love like Western women just like living by themselves, being ranchers, being business women, just like really, yeah. really, you know, doing it themselves in a way that I think is so powerful and important. And that is, is, is something very culturally Western, it feels like. And so I just really wanted to have a portfolio that had that conversation about 
what it's like to almost be like an American woman or is, you know, kind of especially an American woman in the West. Speaking of that, I saw that there's a post that you put on your blog about being at Burning Man. Do you just walk up to people and go, I want to take your picture? A lot of people photograph at Burning Man. Actually, I work at Burning Man. Oh, really? Um, so I go, yeah. So I, I'm out there for like two to three weeks every year. So I work in the ticket office and actually all of those portraits are people that I camp with. So okay. all of those portraits are people that I know. Because I was going to be um, like, how did you approach these people and then stage this thing yeah. if you were just walking no, around? No, I knew them and <laughs> okay. so I would just boss them around. <laughs> but, <laughs> you know, it's kind of funny because that that project, last year's portrait series of the people at Burning Man that lived in my camp was actually kind of a tribute um, to say thank you because I... So I had an old camera. I had a 10-year-old camera that I really needed to update. And I was felt like I was kind of falling behind professionally because I didn't have a newer camera. Yeah. But I was also broke because we had just moved and we hadn't really found good jobs in Montana. So we were really broke last year. Yeah. So the people that I lived with at Burning Man and a couple of other people, but it, the bulk of it came from people that I lived with at Burning Man actually kind of got together and bought me a new camera. Oh, cool. So that was kind of a tribute and like a thank you to them. So a lot of the people that I photographed were people that have helped me along the way. After I made those pictures, I really wanted to make them be beautiful and powerful. And then I printed them off and sent them to a lot of those people. So I gave them like a tangible, like a tangible image that they can, you know, do whatever they want with, but something to kind of say thank you. Mm -hmm. So yeah, <laughs> that's what, that's what that was. But I'm hoping to continue that project and kind of do those pictures i've got people in camp that i wasn't able to do last year who are like requesting me to do those pictures again so i think that's going to be an ongoing project are you still working with film or are you doing digital now i'm doing digital but doing kind of working and trying to work at a business model that's not just handing people usbs or emailing them files but right. actually giving them tangible things to like put on their wall or to kind of hold and you know, hopefully treasure, but at least so that they know how important they are instead of just like emailing a file. I just think yeah. that so many things are so fast and so digital and immediate and you can lose them in your email. Whereas like receiving a package in the mail that you don't expect and, and seeing a picture that is printed professionally and mounted and just, you know, is meant to be shown in your home. Mm -hmm. It's just not something that you receive very often anymore, especially the people that have just been there for me through a ton of things <laughs> yeah just i just really wanted to like do something special you know and that's kind of the gift that i could give i like that yeah that's nice and, and so how much different is it to print something that's digital I, I mean do you have a, like a special printer that you do it with and you still print it on photography paper or those i actually printed myself but i've i've started working with a professional print lab in minnesota then it, you know, it's a little bit, it's unfortunately a little bit more hands off than I'd like it to be, but mm -hmm. buying paper and buying ink and buying a big printer, that's, pro it's just, it's so cost prohibitive that okay. it's, you know, I hate to say it's easier, but it's just, it's actually possible for me. Whereas having like a big printer in a big studio just isn't, it's just not something that I have right now. And if something so. goes wrong with the machine, that's their problem. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I could spend, there are people who spend thousands of dollars on these things and spend hundreds of dollars on ink. And I just, I can spend 150 bucks at this professional print lab and get all the pictures that I want and have them ready for me in a yeah. day. I am in photography and I, I love putting stuff up on my wall and I love seeing it. But the, for me, the, the creation and the art of it is take, making the picture and then the editing of it so that it, it kind of fits in my artistic vision and in my brand. But for me, the printing aspect isn't as crucial that it be, you know, totally hands-on. I know somebody who did photography and I remember him, like he was doing the whole like photo lab thing himself. And I thought that was really cool. But at the same time, I'm like, oh my God, this takes forever. <laughs> With the website that you have, how do you promote yourself and actually find people? Some of it's Facebook promotion. Some of it, a lot of it is just referrals. Okay. I mean, that's, that seems to be the way that most of the world works is just, you know, you make friends, you do a shoot, people vouch for you, other people. I've done some advertising in Google. I've done some networking, in-person networking around Madison, but a lot of that is with other photographers. So it's it's good for finding like second shooting gigs and referrals if they're busy but 
I haven't found that to be as productive. I'd really love to get more involved in just the straight art community within Madison yeah. instead of, you know, instead of the wedding photographer community, just because it just seems like we're all kind of in the same space and <laughs> just like to break out of that a little bit. But yeah, it's mostly Facebook advertising and referrals from friends. And you actually are um, doing the advertising. You're not just posting on Facebook. So you, you've actually dove yeah. into the advertising. Yeah. I don't spend a ton, but I spend about in between 35 and $50 a month. Oh, that's great. You that's know, not just bad boost, at all. Yeah. Just like, just like boosting posts. So basically if I see a post doing well, mm -hmm. or if it's something that I'm like, I just did some senior pictures. So I advertise with those pictures a little bit. If it's something that I think is important that I want to do more of, then I'll, I'll put some money behind it so that people kind of see it. By far, the majority of the money that's come into my business has been referrals. And it's interesting yeah. when people talk about the Facebook advertising. It's kind of a nature of the beast sort of thing. Like advertising for your business has always existed. It's just like, oh, it's Facebook and I can use it for free. So it seems weird to pay to yeah. have it promoted. But it's like, yeah, yeah. we kind of do that anyway if it wasn't around. Trying to find the correct audience for your work is definitely the hardest, yes. I think. You have the people that you think are who you want to talk to. And then you have the people that actually respond. And they're not always the same. So it's mm -hmm. been, it's been interesting. I've been trying to kind of get people on board with my pet portraits and that's not going <laughs> as well. Oh, that's know, too whatever. bad. I really like those. I know. I really love doing them. So I'm really, I'm hoping it'll catch on. I think that's going to be the part where I have to do some actual networking. I've been trying just with the people that I kind of interact with, with my dogs and cats, but one of the hardest things for me, because I'm kind of an introvert, is breaking out of my bubble and interacting with people that I don't know at all. That's my kind of goal for this summer and this fall is just really kind of pushing pushing that part so I can have all the aspects. Because I love doing the dog portraits. You know, it's what keeps me like happy. Yes. <laughs> so How could you not be? Those are awesome. Yeah. Out of all the stuff you've done, what have you learned is probably the most successful or fruitful as far as the work that you do, like being paid or other things? Being paid was deciding that I was going to get over my fear of being a wedding photographer. Yeah. That's that's the biggest step. So that's the know, most successful uh, thing is probably the wedding photographer well, you're saying? Well, I'm going to be honest. It's brought in the most money. It's a lot of work. You know, definitely wedding photography is priced at where it should be based on the work that is that goes into it. It is a good way to make some solid money. You know, with wedding packages, it's a nice little boost of money to be able to invest in other things mm -hmm. within your business. But I was scared of it because, you know, it's so important. It's so crucial. I know. It's like it felt it felt like it was so much pressure. And I was just like I was terrified of like fucking it up. But then just deciding to do it and then getting over your fear was definitely super crucial to my professional development. Yeah. And just being able to be an actual business. It's been slow to build for sure. And at times that's really frustrating because I see a lot of other photographers who are just so busy yeah. and I'm just like, man, why is that not me? But I just have to understand that if I'm going to be true to myself, then this is, this is the work that I'm going to do. Are you doing this full time right now? You are a full time photographer. That's the goal. Right. Right now I have three jobs. Oh, wow. I'm hoping to get it down to two or one. Yes. Like I said, you know, just building up my client base in Madison has taken a while. So I'm not quite to get rid of my day job fully, but I work in retail. I, I actually sell cameras at the camera company. <laughs> nice. So I'm at the East side store, which is fun. You know, it's fun. It's retail though. It's, so it's not my ultimate goal. And then actually I work on a farm this summer. Oh, cool. So I've been farming, like weeding and digging in the dirt and being hot and miserable for two days a week. And that's been really awesome, actually. Is it a volunteer farm or you're actually working on the farm? I'm working on the farm. So last year I did a, a worker share um, with this lady. It's just a tiny little farm in Brooklyn, Wisconsin. Okay. Kind of over drinks in the winter. I was like, hey, what if I know you need help? Like, what if I was the help? And so oh. we've been doing that. It's And that's been interesting, you know, because I've. I've never worked somewhere that was that physical. Like I've done serving and stuff like that, but I've never like been in the sun and had to work through that kind of labor. And so it's been really good. You know, it's kind of what I wanted. I wanted something to kick my butt a little bit. I uh, wanted something to be outside and I take my camera. So I, I frequently photograph her and her dogs. Oh, that's she a got good idea. To, um, yeah. So she actually had me photograph her for Ford last week. So that's pretty fun. Oh, cool. I have a picture in a, like a Ford advertisement. 
she's like exactly the kind of person that I wanted to kind of hang out with and meet and connect yeah. with in Wisconsin. Having that connection with her has been really great. Just like a woman doing it themselves, small business kind of kicking ass and being really strong and stuff. It sounds like a great combination. And I love the fact that you bring the camera out there just in case there's the opportunity. And there it was. I love it when stuff like that happens. You've talked about how you've moved and setting up in Madison and trying to go full time. I mean, how do you maintain your own well-being since a lot of your free time is dedicated to trying to work on these projects? I hang out with my dogs is and is most of the thing that I do. And I'm still a really avid reader. You know, I do cook. My partner has been taking up a lot of the cooking recently, though. Um, That's really so I helpful. guess, yeah, it is really helpful. Although, you know, it was it was a nice thing to be able to cook. So that's, you know, I gotta, I guess we gotta find a balance in that. But, um, <laughs> but yeah, I mean, I, I basically just hang out with my dogs and read and trying to get gigs and like, like the photography business really takes up a lot of space in my brain. So yeah. sometimes it's hard to be at home and do other things rather than working on photos or practicing my Photoshop skills. It takes up so much space in my life. I don't really have a lot of other hobbies, okay. which I guess is why like, I really wanted to do the farming because I was like, I want something where I can just not do this because when I'm at home and my computer's there, then I'm probably going to be working. And it sounds like the two jobs that you have kind of come in alignment with what you do anyway. So one is selling cameras, so you're able to keep up and actually mess around with cameras. And then yeah. the other one is mm -hmm. you're out in a big, broad area like you've spoken of before and you take your camera with you just in case and already have utilized that, that setting. So that's kind of cool how you've yeah. like brought it into both of the things that you're doing. Yeah. It's, it's definitely, you know, life is pretty good in Madison to be totally honest. I was really sad to leave Montana and I was really sad to be in Madison for a while. But you know, once I kind of accepted that this is where I am and this is where the opportunity is, I could go back to Montana, but I'd be broke and probably miserable also. Right. Once I kind of accepted that this is where I am, I really was able to settle in and kind of find places that kind of worked with what I was trying to build, like you like you said, and just being proactive about finding things that I want. Like I was getting stressed out with being in retail five days a week and just having some of those pressures. Mm -hmm. So going out and being outside two days a week has been really helpful because it's just allowed me to kind of disengage from some of that stress that was there. And I think that being able to disengage from that stress has actually given me more space to to focus on my work and therefore I'm actually booking more clients. It's been really, finding a balance is hard, but I think I'm, I'm getting there. And also, before I forget, I need to ask, what kind of dogs do you have? I have two mutts. They're both from ranches in Montana. One is a retired herding dog. She's a Border Collie Chow Mix. Okay. She's geriatric. We adopted her at 13 and a half. And she is now, she'll be 16 in September. Wow. And she just did a hike with us. She's doing great. And then the other one um, is a Kelpie plot hound mix. Huh. Kelpies are not very well known in America. Yeah, they're I don't know a, that one at all. Yeah, they're an Australian breed. They're basically, they're basically a border collie bred with a dingo and it looks like a Doberman. <laughs> what? Really? Um, so look it up. If you Google it, you'll see what I'm talking about. Okay. But they're like this really, this really high drive herding dog from the outback that's like meant to be tough and they're really high drive dogs they're not very easy dogs to have oh, yeah. um we were trying to figure out for the longest time what he was mixed with and we think that he's a hound because he bay he has that bay sound oh, okay it's really high pitched when he does it which is hilarious and annoying <laughs> he uh, yeah he's got a funny story he was actually stolen from an abuser oh and then i used to work at an animal shelter and he was driven to the animal shelter that i was working at and we took him um, especially to, to to foster him and to find him a new family. And that lasted about five minutes. And then he mm -hmm. was ours. He's been kind of tough, but he's now he's three and he's a really good dog. And, you know, it's just a matter of like find, figuring out what he needs and, and running him and being really active. So he's he's been a, a major reason why I have to like go outside. Is there uh -huh. anything you would like to mention that we may not have covered today? Any projects coming up or projects that have nothing to do with what we spoke about? I would love to say that I do, but really the project that I'm working on is that I really want to turn the kind of women of the West or American women or whatever that project is. I want to like think about that more and really focus on that and maybe make it into a book or something like that later. Yeah. That's been a huge thing in my brain too, just like thinking about 
setting up and traveling, potentially traveling around the country a little bit more and, and really trying to set up those photographs so that I, I can make maybe more of a of an enriched story of of women, you know, women kind of doing it themselves and building up their own futures and, and living in America, especially given, I hate to say it, but like the current political climate, you know, instead of like being negative about that all the time, you know, taking that negativity and instead of being like, oh God, I'm going to die or shrivel up or be really miserable, work through that frustration and work through kind of what I think people are capable of. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I think that's going to be a project that's going to take years and definitely will be something that is going to be a longer term goal of mine. So yeah, that's it. Not not anything huge that's totally non sequitur from what we've been talking about, but just kind of building on those things to hopefully one day make something that is cohesive and, and big and, and has something to say. And the one advantage you have with the book is the writing that you've been uh, trying to get back into too. So not only are you creating a photo book, but you could also have pages of stories. I'm almost kind of jealous of that. So you've got two things, you know? So <laughs> Yeah, it's and, in its fetal stage, but you know, it's hopefully it'll come. I was really happy to meet Melanie, and in case I didn't mention this before, I was talking to her while she was on vacation. She decided to talk to me as she was vacationing in Door County here in Wisconsin. When the conversation was over, I had a discussion with my wife about this one. She's always hated the fact that she doesn't know how to take pictures. I don't know what it is, and she doesn't either, but it always looks like when she takes them, like she's running and falling down when she takes the picture. It's the strangest thing. I said, probably the easiest thing to do is maybe try out Instagram. She just wants to get better at it. She's not trying to be a professional. Like Melanie said, that's not even what she was going to do. It just kind of happened. So thank you, Melanie, so much for taking the time to meet with me and visit my website at AmericanBandito.com or read my daily comic journal called Then This Happened on the website or on the Tapas webcomic app. The music for the show today is provided by Romcom. That's com with two M's at RomcomTheBand.com. Thank you all for listening, and you should also subscribe on Apple Podcasts, Google Play, or YouTube. I'll be meeting someone new next week. See you then. So long.